Hey everyone, it's Alexi here from Exile Entertainment. In this video, I'm gonna take you through exactly how film distribution works. Okay, so let's start off with a basic definition of what film distribution is and then break it down from there. So film distribution is the exploitation of your film in specific territories through various channels that maximizes returns. So we're gonna break that down into four parts. Exploitation of your film, specific territories, various channels, and then maximizing returns. So what is the exploitation of your film? Well, the exploitation of your film is essentially your film, the IP that you've created, reaching an audience for some type of fee so that that asset can generate returns for you, can pay back investors, and can hopefully generate future royalties to you on an ongoing basis. Now, part of the exploitation of your film is also you know, the goal of reaching the widest audience possible, right? You've made this film, there's likely, you know, a desire to either entertain or a specific message that you want to convey or a vision um, that you want to get across to your audience. So part of that is actually making sure that the film reaches that audience and the way that it does that is through exploiting it. And, you know, the last thing that you want is to go through the process of making a film and then for that film really not to find an audience, not to reach an audience and to just collect dust. So it's really important that the film actually is exploited. And so there's two ways that this can happen. Either you can do it as the filmmaker, as the producers of the film, or you can attach a company to do it. And a company that distributes films is called a distribution company, right? And no doubt that you've heard that. Um, that term and examples of distribution companies uh, over in the US that everyone would be familiar with is companies like A24 or Neon. So if a company does it, if a company is responsible for distributing your film, you're going to enter into a distribution agreement with that company and there are going to be certain terms, certain main terms that you need to agree on and they are what rights are the distribution is the distribution company going to take? What is the term of the distribution agreement? How much are they paying, if anything, for the rights to exploit the film? And what are the commissions, right? How much is the company getting and how much are you getting? Now, if you're self-distributing, you don't need to worry about any of this because you're the one that is exploiting the film through the various channels that we're going to go through in this video. Um, but if you're attaching a distribution company, then these are the main terms that you need to agree on. So firstly, what are the rights? Well, I'm gonna take you through the rights when I go through the various channels, but basically the rights represent those channels. They represent the channels that a film can be distributed through. And so they include things like theatrical, VOD, airlines, hotels. I'm gonna take you through each of those step by step, but that's what the rights are. So the first thing that you need to agree on is are they taking all the rights or are they only taking specific rights? And typically what you will see in a distribution agreement is that the distributor wants to take all rights. If they're gonna get involved in the film, if they're gonna invest money and time, they wanna be able to maximize the returns. They wanna be able to exploit the film in as many channels as possible. The next one is the term. So terms typically range really anywhere from kind of 10 to 15 years um, for a distribution agreement, which is a long time, right? So you wanna make sure that the distribution company that's representing your film is a good fit for your project because you're going to be in bed with them for a long time. The third one is an MG. So what is an MG? An MG is a minimum guarantee. That's what it stands for. You could also hear it referred to as an advance or a DG, which is a distribution guarantee. And what that is, it's essentially the distribution company paying an advance for the right to distribute that film. So if there are multiple distribution companies that are interested in that project, in your film, then they're gonna to need to battle it out and they're going to need to make offers 
um, and, and basically you'll then have multiple offers um, of multiple advances or MGs that you can then decide who to go with. And the way MGs are paid, they're typically paid 10 to 20% on signing, and then the remainder is paid when you deliver the film. Now, obviously, if you've already completed the film, then it's simply a matter of payment being on delivery or 30 days or 60 days net um, after delivery. So that's MGs, and then the last one is commissions. So you need to agree on what the splits are. So for all the rights and all those channels that I'm gonna take you through, you need to agree, well, how much does a distributor get and how much do you get? And typically, um, what we're seeing now is that the majority of rights are now 50-50. There used to be a bit more kind of um, disparity between the various rights, um, but really we're seeing that most of the rights now are ending up being 50-50. Um, the main one that's on are TV, so free or pay TV usually ends up 60-40 um, in the filmmaker's favour. And the other one is DVD, but of course DVD isn't as relevant anymore. But that one used to sit 80-20 in the distributor's favour. Sometimes kind of 70-30 to 80-20, um, that, that was the range. So those are the different commissions. And so they're really the main terms that you need to, to agree on. But that dictates the starting point of how the film's going to be exploited. You know, is it going to be with a company that you're engaging and that you're working with, or are you going to be self-distributing the film? The next one is specific territory, right? So it's the exploitation of your film in a territory. And distribution does take place in a territory. So that could be um, a territory as large as North America, or it could be specifically the US, could be the UK, could be all of Europe, right? Sometimes you have multiple territory deals. But what's really relevant is that the distributor, the person that's, or the company that's actually um, taking on those rights in that territory has the ability to distribute the film. So it's not going to go and then on sell the film to other distributors. It's responsible for distributing the film in that territory. And so um, a, where this is relevant for a sales agent, um, which you of, often hear that term, you know, a sales agent. Well, a sales agent is responsible for actually selling the film to distributors in multiple territories. So that's the distinction between a sales agent and a distributor. A sales agent actually is representing your film in the worldwide marketplace, and they're trying to find distributors in different territories to sell your film to. And they're trying to get the biggest MG or the biggest advance as that they can from those distributors. Whereas a distributor operates locally, right? It has local knowledge of that specific territory, that country, or maybe that continent, and it's able to, again, exploit the film through the various channels, networks, um, relationships that it has built up in that local market. So the third point is the various channels. So what are the various channels that a film can be distributed through? Well, there's theatrical, which is cinema, right? So going through, um, you know, it could be a limited release, it could be a mid-sized release, it could be a wide release. Um, but the key there is it's going through cinemas commercially. And the reason it's important to um, distinguish between uh, theatrical and non-theatrical, even though they both sit under kind of theatrical rights. Non-theatrical is things like cin uh, festivals. So the film's still playing in a cinema, but it's not the cinema, the exhibitor, that's putting on the film in that case. It's the festival that's doing it. And a film can actually generate decent revenue from festivals. And so it's important to keep in mind, if you are submitting your film, um, your feature film, not short film, so if it's a feature film, if you're submitting that to film festivals around the world, um, it's not only your right, but it is standard to request a screening fee um, for that festival to show the film. Um, I didn't learn this, I kind of just stumbled upon this fact. Um, so most festivals um, may not publicise that they pay a screening fee, um, but you should always put that to the festival. And screening fees can range anywhere from like 200 to 500 US. So, you know, there's some decent revenue that can be built up just from festivals. And that's non-theatrical. Um, other examples of non-theatrical 
could be things like the film screening at a um, film society, uh, or it could be something like a cultural event or a screening at an embassy, or something similar to that. So the next set of rights, which are really relevant today, are VOD, so video on demand. And then within video on demand, you have TVOD, which is transaction, transactional video on demand. So think of when you're buying a film from iTunes um, or Google and you're paying a specific fee to either watch, you know, own the film or to rent it, right? So you're paying, it's one transaction for one film. The other one, which is the big one now, is SVOD, streaming video on demand. And so that's like Netflix, um, obviously uh, Amazon's um, Prime, uh, yeah, Amazon Prime. Uh, also Apple now has a streaming platform, Disney Plus, um, Hulu, all those types of streaming platforms where the consumer's paying a subscription and your film is one of many films in that library. So that's the other right. And then the final one is AVOD, which is advertising video on demand. Not as common, or you don't see as many big platforms as you do with the other ones, but that's essentially your film playing on a platform with ads in between. So VOD is obviously a huge um, part of the channels, the various channels that a film can be um, distributed through right now, especially with the rise of streaming. And I'm gonna take you through streaming in a bit more detail um, when we go through maximizing return. So the next rights are DVD. So while DVD is essentially obsolete, there are some territories where DVD um, is still a decent enough money maker that distributors will put, will put the film out on DVD. And like I mentioned earlier, that's where a distributor will actually take a greater cut of the revenue. And what's interesting to note about that is two things. So number one is distributors were taking, let's say 80% of that revenue, but also DVD would cost consumers, you know, 20 to $25 to buy. Now, if you compare that to video on demand, where firstly the splits are 50-50, and you know you might only pay be paying 9.99 or even 19.99 for a new release but you can also opt to rent it for much less so you can see there that the distributors pie right the distributor the, the kind of revenue that was once available to distributors in when dvds were kind of thriving and booming is now much smaller and that's essentially why um there are, well, this is my view, uh, but it has become a lot more difficult for local distributors, right? It's become more difficult for them to really generate meaningful revenue and to place bigger bets on independent and art house films. So that's DVD. Then you have TV. So you have free TV and pay TV. Uh, then you have hotels and airlines. And then finally, education. So you can see there's a number of channels that a film can actually be distributed through. And so what's important to note, again, going back to the kind of self-distribution versus working with a distributor, is that if you're gonna self-distribute the film, what you really wanna work out is, you know, are you going to be able to access all those channels, right? Because the core of distribution is actually being able to distribute through those channels in an optimized way, right? Being able to really maximize returns through each of those channels. And so that's where if you're self-distributing, you, you may be able to get to those channels, but if you can't, then it's worth thinking about, well, if I was to work with an established company, you know, how much are they gonna be able to kind of penetrate those channels and really maximize returns? But then of course, they're gonna take a cut, so you have to work that out, versus you self-distributing, you know, which of those channels are you really going to be able to tackle and move the meat needle in a meaningful way? And are you going to be able to generate more revenue than you would if you're going with a distributor who's going to be able to get access those channels, but is going to take a cut? So that's really what you have to weigh up um, when deciding um, whether you self-distribute or you go with a company. So then the channels and then finally maximizing returns. So a distribution company is in the business of maximizing returns from each film, right? That is their business and they are profit driven. Obviously, a lot of distribution companies 
um, operate with a purpose, they have specific films that they want to acquire, but they do need to generate profit, right, in order to keep the business going and in order to keep, um, hopefully keep fulfilling on their purpose and their vision as a company. So in that way, distribution companies and filmmakers, are their commercial interests are aligned as a starting point, right? They both want to maximize returns. The filmmaker may want to do that because they want to maximize returns for the investors, or they might just want to reach the, the largest audience possible. But by reaching the largest, largest audience possible, you're also maximizing returns by default. So it's the same thing. So that's, I think, a really good thing to keep in mind because um, distribution companies or sales agents sometimes can get a bad rap, but in my view, you know, you're often just hearing those horror stories and it's important to remember that actually you're both working towards the same goal. So as a producer or a filmmaker, what you want to do is really just find the best companies to work with, find the ones with a good reputation um, who are going to do the right thing by you. So maximizing returns is um, yeah, something that either you or the distribution company com uh, is going to need to do. And part of that is you know, reaching an audience. And so in order to reach an audience, you need to market the film. You need to um, advertise the film and you need to make it known to the general public that the film is being shown and they, they can um, watch and purchase that film. So marketing and P&As and, &As and, and uh, so you'll hear the term P and A quite a bit. That refers to print and advertising. So it's essentially the advertising costs involved with um, promoting a film. So marketing and advertising or P and A plays a crucial part in the, the distribution process. And part of the decision about which company to work with may actually be what's their marketing plan. You know, how much are they willing to commit to P and A to marketing? to make sure that the film's actually able to reach an audience and maximize returns. So they're the kind of four aspects of film distribution that I see that kind of fits within that global definition and that you can use to then, um, you know, if at any time you kind of forget what film distribution is or you're wondering how to really break down the different components, that definition um, is a really good way to just remember what the key elements of uh, the film distribution process are. So a few things that I want to run you through from my experience, um, A, working with a distribution company, but also running a distribution company, which we are doing. You know, Exile is distributing two feature films this year theatrically. Uh, so this is something that we're in the business in and that we're, um, you know, we have experience doing. So a few things is number one, festivals matter, but they don't matter as much as the commercial potential of the film. So a distributor is really going to be looking for films that again, they, they feel or they, that they can predict um, with some level of, of certainty uh, is going to perform and is gonna, going to maximize returns for them. So festivals matter in that they can add value, they can add, you know, they can add some commercial value to a project, um, but the commercial value of that project, the inherent commercial value, things like genre, cast, are going to be much more important to a distributor. So that's the first thing that's important to note when we're talking just about, you know, we're talking just about film distribution here, right? So there may be many other reasons why um, festival play is important to you as a filmmaker or to your film, but looking at it purely from the lens of a distributor, that's really what they're looking for. Distributors work with sales agents, you know, it's an ecosystem. They develop those relationships, they have um, built those relationships over a number of years. There are multiple deals that have happened through different relationships and so there's trust that also builds. And so the default for a distributor is to find their films through sales agents, right? It's easier for them, um, they have those relationships, so it's easy to do those deals. And so something to keep in mind as a filmmaker is that if you can attach a sales agent to your project, um, it may make it easier for you to find distribution. That absolutely doesn't mean that you can't go out there and do that by yourself. Um, 
and by all means, you should give it a go. I certainly um, have, you know, I've acted as a sales agent on some of my films, but it's a lot of work, you know, finding all the distributors in all the different territories um, is, is a lot of work to take on. So sometimes teaming up with a sales agent is a more efficient way to do that and you're kind of leveraging their relationship with the distributors. Another um, kind of tip that I'll give you, or not tip, uh, actually a bit of insight is that when we're trying to work out how much we should be paying for a film, what sort of MG we should put forward, if there are multiple offers from multiple distributors, that's going to drive the price up and it's going to make it more competitive, right? And so at that point, the distributor really has to take a bit of a risk on the amount of money that they're putting up. But the starting point is to work out, you know, if we're looking at a film that we want to acquire, we'll look at how much revenue do we think that this film can generate through the various channels. And we'll come up with a low, mid and a high range. And then we'll take the low projections and we'll want to pay as an MG around 25% of that figure. The reason it's 25% is because as a distributor, you then have to add your hard costs on top of that. So things like classification, DCP creation, um, then your marketing, then you have your own overheads for the business. So if you have staff, office, you know, office rent, those sorts of things. So you need to leave enough margin in there that if the film doesn't perform really well, if it just hits those low projections, you need to have at least covered your costs. So from there, you know, you're hoping that there's significant upside for the film. But if there's no other bidders, you know, a distributor will try and drive that price even lower in order to maximize the potential profit. And of course, if there are multiple bidders, it's then up to the distributor to look at those projections and see how much they're willing to kind of risk that money to, um, I guess, bet on their own projections and their own confidence that the film's actually going to perform better than their low, um, their low estimates. And then uh, one other thing to leave you on is streaming. So streamers will typically pay, and this is a, a very general rule of thumb, um, but if there are no other bidders involved, streamers will still want to pay the least amount possible for the project. And so if there's no competition, they're going to be paying uh, something that's typical to what a TV deal um, was or is. You know, they'll just replicate that type of license fee and that's what they'll put forward. Again, if there's no bidders though, they can drive that price really, really far down. So, you know, we've had films where you know, even though big streaming platforms have picked it up, the amount that they're paying isn't that high because there were no competing bids. And so again, this just goes back to the importance as a filmmaker or as a producer to make something that is of a really high quality and has commercial value. Because without that, even if you get a streaming deal, it can be a really small figure. But as a rule of thumb, if the film is really good, if there is some competition, um, a, they're going to be paying uh, around 120% of the budget or if it's a really competitive bid, you know, if there's multiple parties involved, then that, that sale price can just get driven up um, quite a lot. And you don't need to look further than, you know, the deals that come out of Sundance to see how far those deals can get pushed. So that's where streaming usually sits with a distributor. If a sales agent hasn't done a, a worldwide deal with a streaming platform, then a distributor has the ability to sell the film to the local streaming platforms or the local branch of the streaming platforms. So if you're in Australia, you know, the film could just get sold to Netflix in Australia and New Zealand, but no other territories for Netflix around the world. So that's it for this video. A lot of information packed in there. If you want any clarification on the points that I touched on, just let me know in the comments section below. And if there's any uh, information that you want me to elaborate on in further videos, be it to do with film distribution, film business, um, or our, how we run our um, production and distribution company, let me know in the comments section below. Uh, we'll be doing a video a week, so very keen to hear about any topics that you want covered.